Hong Kong is a fascinating city. It's a place that I've been drawn to for most of my adult life. A city influenced by two worlds, East and West. And as a child of both Chinese and English parents, it's a place that always felt naturally, for me, home. Of course, it's a city that's also had its fair share of challenges lately. If it wasn't the protest movement, it was the lockdowns as a result of COVID. And now, navigating the complexities of being part of this broader vision known as the Greater Bay Area, an economic region that incorporates not only Hong Kong, but also Macau and Guangdong. And if you think about it already today, if you, most of the products that we use on a daily basis have either been financed or conceived or designed or produced or distributed in one of the factories factories either in Shenzhen or Guangzhou and have come through a container port here in Hong Kong. An ideal place to consider the broader question, what is the future of industrialization? Now, it might not strike you really as obvious that industrialization is something that is inherently exciting. But interestingly, the acceleration of the industrial sector in terms of digital transformation has the potential in both size and scope and impact to be significantly bigger than the consumer internet. And that really makes sense if you think about it. Most of the challenges we face today, whether it's cost of living, inflation, shutdowns in the supply chain, challenges in production, food, energy, have at their heart this question of how do we improve the productivity of the industrial sector? Transformation is something which really could not come at a better time. Now, you might ask, this idea of transformation in industry is something we've been talking about for quite some time. In fact, about 10 years ago, one of the biggest buzzwords was Industry 4.0. So, what happened? I mean, Industry 4.0 was this idea that suddenly all the, the heavy machines of the industrial era should be transformed with more data, artificial intelligence and automation, giving way to not only much more productivity, but the ability to not only mass produce, but to micro personalize. To see this in context though, Industry 4.0 was really a kind of a industry plan for Germany. In fact, the Mittelstand, which is the middle, medium enterprises or the hidden champions of Germany, which were family or private owned and tended to be highly focused on quality and international export, have for long not only employed over two thirds of workers in Germany, but have been really the heart of the German economic miracle. But of late, that sector has struggled. It's been slow to embrace digital transformation, and although they invested heavily in automation, quite frankly, their machines were not able to talk to each other. So when you think about the broader challenges now to industrialization, whether it's here in the Greater Bay Area or in Germany, this idea of how we improve the way we make and distribute things is really a fundamental question. But where do we go from here? If you think about it, one of the biggest problems has been the question of scale. Many big industrial firms have been successful creating what they call lighthouse projects or single smart factories that were lights out or could operate entirely automated. It was another thing to scale this up to a network of factories. But what if this wasn't really the goal we should be aiming for? Rather than a network of connected factories, what if we could create instead a kind of an ecosystem of connected suppliers working together, not geographically, but in terms of API or digital links or data flows. Actually, there's been a model for this in the past. If you look post-war Japan, one of the most successful industrial structures was something known as the Kiretsu, which was uh, really a network of suppliers that were tied together with cross shareholdings. And if you look at the height of this, which was really maybe Toyota at its peak, its Kiretsu was able to succeed and win not only in terms of cost savings and engineering innovation, but the tacit knowledge that was really built through years of trust and sharing of information and data, the ability to not only innovate, but solve problems at scale. Now, of course, this model struggled as we moved into the 21st century, but it does raise the question, what might a 21st century digital Kiretsu look like? Organizations that may still be small or medium in scale, but connected with data, automation, and smarter workflows, able to collaborate, not just bound by geography, but connected by their digital missions and capabilities. So when you look at it this way, 
I think we're really at a very interesting point where in places like this, the Greater Bay Region or in Germany or places in India, we're really seeing a race to reinvent the very spirit and DNA of industrialization. I think in the future with these digital twins and factories, we'll be able to move locations very quickly. So for example, as recently when Apple decided to diversify their manufacturing of smartphones from China into India, in the near future, they'll essentially be able to copy paste the digital settings of one factory installation from one market to the other, embracing agility and greater resilience as they do so. Ultimately, this isn't, I think, just about improving profits or greater efficiency. By improving our industrial base, we're empowering ourselves to tackle some of the grand challenges facing humanity today, whether it's climate change, uh, feeding the world and dealing with hunger, handling pandemics and other global crises of production. That, more than anything else, is a vision worth fighting for.